step nine of the 10 step protocol, we're going to do the lumbosacral release and traction. We're going to do gapping the ilia and also the rock and glide of the tural, dural tube. So first of all, here we have the sacrum again. We're going to traction it towards the feet in order to release it from being jammed up in L4, L5. It's the same principle that we did with the occiput and the atlas C1 previously. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to put it right underneath the sacrum and also I'm going to use the other hand, the right hand, to stabilize L4, L5 as I traction with my left hand towards her feet going caudad to create that space of tractioning So you want to stabilize L4, L5 and traction the sacrum, creating that gapping, that decompression. So that's the lumbosacral decompression. We also are going to gap the ilia. And when we do that is I put my right hand underneath the sacrum and I take my left hand and I go to the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, and I immediately compress it. So I compress the ASIS towards each other, and what this does is release the SI joints in the back, the sacroiliac joints. And that allows the sacrum to drop down and move freely. It feels really good and releases any tensions around the sacrum and lumbar area. This is wonderful for people with sciatica, for example. Any sort of low back pain, any sort of tension in the pelvic area is wonderful. Okay, moving on to the rock and glide. What we're going to do is place one hand underneath the head, the occiput, and the other hand right underneath the sacrum again. And what we're doing is, if you can think of the concept of a pulley with one wheel, with two wheels, and one wheel going in one direction and one in the other direction. And what we're doing with the rock is releasing any of the transverse fascia along here, any of the rings, the transverse rings of the dural tube. So it's basically rocking, going forward and backward. So the motion would be like this, just like that. So rocking forward and backward. This relaxes the connective tissues of the dural tube, both top and bottom. And also you can do this anywhere between three to six times and you'll, you'll feel the craniosacral rhythm have a nice motion and you'll feel the cerebral spinal fluid motion. So that's the rock, which is a transverse rock and the glide is, the position is the same, but what we're doing is we're going like this. I think of it as flossing the dural tube and this what this does is, is it releases any longitudinal tension along the dural tube because we're going like this and we're also going like this, like a flossing concept. And it releases any tensions along the spinal nerve roots. So it's the same position. And just um, with your intention, imagine going longitudinally as in flossing the dural tube, if you want to think of it that way. And both the rock and the glide increase the range of motion here. So, so think of that pulley with the two wheels on either end and the pulley is moving along smoothly and gliding. And 
any tensions, both longitudinal and transverse, of both the rock and glide are being released in the dural sleeves and also the spinal nerve roots are being relaxed and lengthened. So that is step nine of the 10-step protocol.